So what is good people? Welcome to another investing video and in this video I'm going to show you guys step by step how to buy uh, precious metals with crypto. Um, I've had a few people ask me this and since I deal in crypto all the time I figured it'd be a good idea to make a video about it. Plus there's so many sites out there that offer discounts if you're buying stuff with crypto versus buying with your um, debit card, PayPal, or credit card. Um, of course, if you use check or wire, that's the cheapest way to buy them if you're buying online. But um, I am very impatient, and so I never use check or wire. I always go with either crypto or one of my debit cards. So I am here on AppMex, and I want to buy this uh, this Batarang. I guess it's a pre-order because uh, it doesn't ship until March 1st, which is still a little bit from now. But it looks really cool. It's a one ounce, uh, one ounce silver Batarang, shaped of course like the uh, the Batarangs in Batman, and they let you buy it in crypto. You actually get it at a little bit of a discount and you can see here which coins they actually accept. And so we're going to go ahead and start things off. Obviously the first thing you need to do is you need to buy crypto. Um, there are several different ways you can do it. It's going to depend on which exchange you get it from. The exchanges that are available is going to depend on where you live. Um, here in the United States, we do have a lot of the larger ones like Coinbase, uh, Binance.us, Crypto.com. Uh, they are all places that you can buy crypto from. However, if you are looking to avoid something called KYC, which stands for Know Your Customer, uh, a lot of these bigger uh, regulated exchanges in the U.S., they all have KYC. And what that means is basically when you create an account, it's going to be a very limited account. And then you have to actually prove that you're a real person before they can make your account unlimited. And it will re require stuff like giving them your social security number, um, you know, your address, proof of address, different things like that. And of course, that's so they can report to the IRS. So if you want to avoid those, that's going to be a lot harder if you live in the U.S. Uh, if you live outside the U.S., then there's a lot of places that uh, don't do KYC. As a matter of fact, I can do a quick Google search. Um, how to buy crypto without... Yep, there it is, KYC. Something that I looked up before. And here's a good list of the different crypto exchanges uh, that will allow you to buy crypto without being KYC. Um, I don't think any of these will allow you to do it if you're a US citizen. Like for example, I do have a KuCoin account, but you can't buy crypto using fiat if you're a US citizen, unfortunately. Same goes for Bybit. I don't even think Bybit is open to the US. So if you're a US citizen, you have no choice. Uh, more than likely, you will have to KYC and so the government will know if you're buying crypto but if you're outside the u.s then you have a lot more options so i go with uh, coinbase um coinbase i've been using it for several years and the reason why i go with coinbase is because they have a membership level called uh, coinbase one and if you're a coinbase one member then you don't pay any fees for buying selling or trading crypto on coinbase and so that's why i use coinbase as you can see i have a very small balance that is because i do not keep my crypto on exchanges i recommend that if you are going to buy crypto if you're going to invest in it and you're going to hold it do not leave it on exchanges um, we've seen several exchanges go down over the past few months um, ftx was the biggest one but there are a lot of others, and there are some that are still going down. Unfortunately, you cannot trust these people to actually just leave your crypto alone. They're going to do something with it. And so I suggest that if you are going to invest in crypto, make sure you get it off of the exchange and put it into a wallet that you control. 
Uh, so that, that is what I do. None of my crypto um, is here except for this little bit in, invested in Ethereum 2. But most of my crypto is actually off the exchange and on a personal wallet or I am using it on other exchanges um, like KuCoin to lend out and things like that. But that's for another video. So here on Coinbase, um, I can buy crypto here and you can actually hook it up to several different ways. If I wanted to buy Bitcoin, I could use my Wells Fargo account, uh, my Wells Fargo debit card, Google Pay, PayPal, and wire transfer. If you use wire transfer, then they will hold on to your funds for a certain amount of time before you can actually send them out. And so I don't recommend that unless you're fine with just waiting. But that has the lowest fees wire transfer does. But if you use any of the others, then you can actually go ahead, buy the crypto, and spend it all in one day. So first thing we need to do is we need to first figure out um, which cryptocurrency we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my cart. Begin checkout. And I'm going to skip through a lot of this stuff until I get to the point where I actually need to send them the crypto. You can see right here, here is the total. I chose um, cryptocurrency via BitPay as my payment. And I'm going to go ahead and place order. And it's asking me to begin my payment with BitPay. And oh, well, would you look at that? I can actually connect with Coinbase. So you can see here it's asking you to choose a wallet. I'm going to head and connect with Coinbase and connect my account. And it's going to ask me to authorize it. I'm already logged in to Coinbase. All right, my Coinbase account has been successfully successfully paired. Okay, so now that everything is connected, it's telling me that uh, it's showing how much Bitcoin that I have, and I need to buy this much. I remember the amount was like uh, forty-five dollars or something like that. Well, I'm gonna buy more than that. I'm gonna go ahead and buy fifty dollars, and I'm gonna do it through PayPal. And there's the fee that I would pay uh, if I wasn't a Coinbase One membership or a Com Coinbase One member. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that $50 via PayPal. And if I refresh, it should show it in my account. Yep, so if I go back to BitPay, uh, let me go ahead and refresh this. All right, now it's showing Bitcoin, how much I have. Let me go ahead and make the payment. All right, so now it's asking me to do two-step authentication. All right, so there we have it. It's gone through. And it only cost me $44.30. Alright, so here I am on uh, Bullion Max. And I'm going to pick up this uh, Meat Eater. Uh, meat Eater 4 ounce silver kit. Go ahead, add to cart. And you can see the different prices between them. Um, it's 140 if I do it with credit card, 
and 136 with crypto so I do save quite a bit of money buying it in crypto and now while I'm here in the cart any kind of uh, sensitive information I'm going to skip through and actually update didn't mean to put two of them in my cart and I'm go ahead and proceed to checkout all right, so it looks like Bullion Max also uses BitPay. And uh, here's the different coins that they use during BitPay. We're going to go ahead and click Continue. Place order. Begin payment. Now, once again, BitPay is going to ask me for um, which wallet I'm going to use. And you can, we'll actually look at some of them now. You can see they do have Crypto.com, Binance, KuCoin. If you want to use any of these, then they will work with BitPay. Uh, Trust Wallet is a good wallet for um, self-custodial. MetaMask works well also. But I'm just going to use Coinbase. All right, and so now it's reading how much uh, Bitcoin I have. And as you can see, I don't have enough to cover the order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back into Coinbase and then buy enough Bitcoin to cover the order and then come back and actually finalize it so I still have five dollars in Bitcoin so you want to do a little bit extra just to cover any network fees that may happen so I needed 147 I'll go I'll just go ahead and do 147 pay with PayPal And you can see here my five dollars and uh, sixty-four cent fee is waived. Go ahead, click buy now. And we are done. Let me refresh to make sure the money is there. Actually, let me click on my assets. And there it is, $150.83 worth of Bitcoin. Now I go back to BitPay. And I'm going to refresh the page. And you can see the Make Payment button is now pressable. And there it is. There's my current balance in Coinbase. Click on make payment and they're probably going to make me do a yep two-step authentication again. That gets sent to my phone. 646-8641. Submit. All right, and it's done. So now that is going to be on the way. Return to Bullion Max is going to close that window. Payment complete, close. And then it's going to refresh. And we go to the confirmation. All right. So those, both of those are going to make some really good videos once I finally get them. So that's basically how it works. Uh, what you'll just have to do is you'll have to create an account with um, one of those wallets or one of those exchanges that work with BitPay. I think uh, from what I've seen so far, most of these online dealers work with BitPay. So, um, but as you saw, there was a ton of options there. So you should be okay. And if not, you can always just create a new account in one of those. Um, now, BitPay itself, I don't think they allow U.S. customers, so you may, if you're outside the U.S., then you can just create a BitPay account and actually pay directly from there. 
If you're inside the U.S., if you're a U.S. citizen, then you will just be able to use one of those other wallets to do so. Um, and I also put a list of the different exchanges that I know that accept crypto payments. So like SD Bullion uh, accepts crypto payments. Uh, JM Bullion also accepts crypto payments. Money Mills Exchange also accepts crypto payments. Buy Gold and Silver Coins accepts crypto payments. Uh, Provident Metals accepts crypto payments. And that's it. That's all the ones that I have. I'm sure there are a lot of other ones out there. Uh, if you know of any that I miss, go ahead and leave a comment. So that way this can help out other people who come to this video. But um, crypto is a much cheaper way to buy precious metals. As you can saw, I saved like five bucks just from using crypto. And thanks to being a Coinbase One member, I don't pay any crypto fees. So it actually worked out being a really good deal for me. So I do, um, I do definitely see the benefit of using crypto to buy precious metals. So if you guys have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, go ahead and leave a comment. And thank you so much for watching this, and I will see you in the next video.